If you want to practice all of the new PTE questions using artificial intelligence on an online portal that has a similar marking to your real PTE exam, head over to masterpte.com.au to create a free account. Here, you can practice all four sections separately and receive instant feedback for all of your speaking, writing, reading, and listening. You can also view and compare your answers with others who have already succeeded in achieving a high score. Download 9090 Bands template for speaking, writing, and listening. Take mock test, receive instant result, overall feedback, and in-depth analysis which helps you pinpoint exactly where you lose points. MasterPTE.com.au the best PTE practice software in the world. The experiment on body fat change which includes examining 31 women volunteered in the program, all of them are provided with healthy diet and are not allowed to change their diet for a period of up to 6 weeks. They all must exercise regularly for 6 months and are expected to burn 2000 calories weekly. The result was that half of the group lost weight, while the other half actually gained weight. Scientists have come up with two explanations. One is that most of them might be cheating on their meals, while the other half might be eating a lot more than the recommended intake of the program. The universe we know it is actually really old. Do you know exactly how old is the universe? The universe is about 50 billion years old and it is discovered that the oldest star is about 30 billion years old, not older than the universe which is perfectly matched. 
Well, people thought it might expand at 10 to 20 billion years ago however according to the theory of Big Bang it actually happened 13, 7 billion years ago. The Big Bang theory is also known as the cosmological model as simply an amazing discovery. The expansion of the universe had really occurred 13.7 billion years ago which is can match the current prediction of the cosmological model. However, we still not sure how many years more and will expand in the future is really unknown to us. For thousands of years, philosophers and astronomers and thinkers of all sorts have imagined that the universe, the space around us, was rather like this floor in front of us. It was fixed and unchangeable, and things happen on it, just as people walk around. So the stars, the comets, and the planets, and the other heavenly bodies moved around and traced down their parts on this completely unchanging stage of space. In the 20th century, as a result of Einstein's work, that view of the universe was completely transformed. We began to understand that there was no absolutely fixed stage of space at all on which all celestial notions were played out. But in some sense, on the larger scale in the universe, the space itself was in this state of continuous dynamic change. That was a prediction made by Einstein, but it wasn't Einstein, Harold, the owner of making the discovery that our universe was really like that.
I am trying here to capture the dynamics that is conventionally being associated with urbanization developments and get back once again to this question of agriculture. Once you have cities and you also have the reverse of cities, you have countryside. You have rural areas and have this relationship with urban areas and it needs to develop agricultural goods. And you trade with increasing industrial goods. Increasing agricultural productivity reduces labor needs and opportunities in the rural areas and pushing people towards to the cities. There is this notion that in order to have progress and development in cities, you need people. If everybody is busing, growing to crops, growing food that exists, you can't have people all going into the city. You need to increase productivity in the countryside. You need to have one farmer producing enough food for more than one family. And then you will have growth and productivity in the countryside, which will free of people move to the cities. In fact, in many ways, it will compel it. They will go to the cities, search for jobs, and provide labor force for the production of all kinds of things. Today, a university like the LSE certainly has to acknowledge that it is in competition for the best students, all of whom have choices they can exercise, and many of them choices which run across national and continental borders. We are in competition, too, for staff. The academic job market is one of the most global 25 there is. And in the 21st century, English is the new Latin. So universities in English-speaking countries are exposed to more intensive competition than those elsewhere. We are in competition for government funding through the assessment of research quality. We are in competition for research contracts from public and private sector sources, and indeed we are in competition for the philanthropic pound. Many of our own donors were at more than one university, and indeed think of the LSE's requests alongside those of other charities to which they are committed. That is a competitive environment which is particularly visible to a vice chancellor.
The debt today is so high. It's 200,000 rupees. 300,000 rupees of peasants who have no capital. And they who know within a year or two when they accumulate that kind of debt, they will never be able to pay back. Where is the debt coming from? It's coming from a seed that is costing 100,000 to 200,000 rupees per kilogram, depending on what you got. Seed that used to be free, used to be theirs. Pesticides each time, the more they use, the more they have to use. 12 sprays, 15 sprays, 20 sprays. Pesticide used in just the last five years in the large areas of India has showed up by 2,000%. That's why the free market and globalization have brought. And since we're talking about peasants who have no money, who have no capital, they can only buy expensive seeds and expensive pesticides by borrowing. And who lended that money? The same companies that sell the pesticides, which are the same companies that sell the seeds, as you know, are now also the major creditors. The Education Leadership Initiative was started by Dean Bob Joss of Stanford Graduate School of Business. He talked a lot about the importance of education leadership. Education leaders need to be dynamic and entrepreneurial change agents. Managing is not enough. Increasingly leaders must rise to the challenge of changing their organizations through innovative, problem-solving strategies. So we are combining forces from our School of Education and School of Business to support the development of management skills and leadership capacity for current superintendents and other central office leaders. The purpose of School of Education is learning while the purpose of School of Business is management. Now many institutes are providing education leadership learning opportunities for profit or non-profit. We want to make sure that here at Stanford, we are not only delivering the services but with good quality. The program incorporates case studies and research-based presentations, discussions, and exercises. Participants also collaborate and build relationships through group work. However, they must realize that it is their own responsibility to achieve and accomplish. What others can do does not indicate what you are capable of.
Laughter is one of the greatest therapies in combating adversity, and whole communities and nations have frequently relied on humor to get them through their bleakest time. On August 13, 1961, the barbed wire was rolled out of Berlin to create the Berlin Wall. For nearly 30 years, until it was dismantled, wall jokes proliferated, especially among those living in the East. Laughing was all that was left. Jokes about those who rule you, and sometimes those who tyrannize you, are a form of folklore that has existed in societies as seemingly different as communist Eastern Europe, Tsarist Russia, modern Egypt, 12th century Persia, and modern day Iran. Humor can also be wonderfully subversive. It can protect self respect and identity. In more totalitarian societies, laughter relieves, at least temporarily, the pressures and anxiety of political oppression. Political jokes may not in themselves topple dictators, but they can provide solace. In a democracy like our own, perhaps the trouble with political jokes is that they sometimes get elected. I had been writing nonfiction for years, actually, and but secretly wanting to be a novelist. When I first started writing at the age of 30, it was with the intention of writing fiction. But I took a little detour um, for 10 or 12 years and wrote nonfiction, which I have absolutely no regret about at all. I think it was exactly the right thing for me to do. But there was that dream tucked away inside of me to do this. And I remember reading something that Eudora Welty wrote, who is, you know, the great novelist from Mississippi who had a big influence on me, actually. She said, no art ever came out of not risking your neck. And I think she's absolutely right about that. It felt that way to me at the time, and actually it feels that way to me every time I sit down to write something. Finally, in the early 90s, I took my deep breath and started writing fiction. It felt risky to me at the time to do that. And one of the very first things that I wrote 
was what I thought was going to be the first chapter of a novel called The Secret Life of Bees. I wrote it in 1992, and it is actually essentially the first chapter of the novel as it is now. Studying law at university over three years gives you a really unique opportunity to acquire a much greater and much more mature level of understanding and knowledge of uh, the law, which can be a, a real benefit to your career in the future. If you're not so sure if you want to study law, law can also be an incredibly helpful degree for a multitude of other careers. For example, politics, journalism, the charity sector, the United Nations. It can be a springboard to all these different types of degrees, that careers. Why is this? Well, because of the way that we teach law. A law degree involves not only studying what the legal rules are, but really taking an analytical approach to the world around us. It involves thinking about why certain laws exist. Can they be justified philosophically? How have they developed historically? <coughs> what social goals are they trying to uh, serve? And how should the law develop in the future? So here at Cambridge, we're not just studying what the law is. We're talking about what the law could be, what the law should be.
you want to practice all of the new PTE questions using artificial intelligence on an online portal that has a similar marking to your real PTE exam, head over to masterpte.com.au to create a free account. Here, you can practice all four sections separately and receive instant feedback for all of your speaking, writing, reading, and listening. You can also view and compare your answers with others who have already succeeded in achieving a high score. Download 9090 Bands template for speaking, writing, and listening. Take mock test, receive instant result, overall feedback, and in-depth analysis which helps you pinpoint exactly where you lose points. MasterPTE.com.au the best PTE practice software in the world.